and welcome to my channel. My name is Kika and today I'm going to show you all of the things that I needed for my book Knit This, which is out now and I have been waiting to finally show you and film this video for so, so long. If you have been following along for the past year, you know that I have been working on this knit pattern book and I even showed the behind the scenes process of designing and knitting some of the sweaters that are behind me. But today I'm going to show you all of them and also talk a little bit more about the book. The book is called Knit This, 21 Gorgeous Everyday Knit Patterns and it comes in both English and in Finnish. And it comes in English and Finnish because I'm from Finland and we also really wanted to have the book available in local shops here in Finland where I live. So, as the name it says itself, there are 21 knit patterns. There are 10 sweaters, 2 cardigans, 4 hat patterns or beanie patterns, 2 pairs of socks, 2 pairs of mittens and 1 scarf to choose from and they are really ranging from more beginner friendly to more advanced techniques and in the book itself because I know there are a lot of people out there and maybe you who want to knit but don't feel that confident yet so that's why I included a whole chapter on tips on how to read a knitting pattern I know that that can feel really intimidating and overwhelming so that's why I really wanted to make a whole chapter dedicated to that because it really is less scary than you think once you sort of get the hang of it. There is also a whole chapter on care tips for your handmade knits because of course if you're gonna put all this effort into making something you want to make sure that it's gonna last for a long time. Then also like a little funny thing is some knitter slang because there are all kinds of funny words out there when you dive into the world of knitting so I just wanted to include that as well. Then there's also of course an introduction where I talk about my own relationship to knitting and the journey here. There's also a section of special techniques that are used in the book with some photo tutorials that you can use and of course if there are things that you don't understand Google and YouTube are your best friends. If you'd like to order your own copy of Knit This, you can click the link in the description below. So it is available both in English and in Finnish and there is worldwide shipping available. If you live really far away though and you want to skip the shipping costs, you can also order instead the ebook version. So that's a totally digital version where you get everything that is in this book, but just digitally. So I'll leave the link in the description below. Alright, but now let me show you what I've knitted. up we have the room to bloom sweater which is also the sweater that you can see on the cover of the book this is a really really comfortable sweater first and foremost because it has a really generous neckline opening it also has quite generous sleeves and it has this side slit so it's overall just like really boxy and contemporary fit and just super super comfortable i wore this last winter so so much and it's knitted with one strand of merino and one strand of silk mohair which is kind of a theme in my book obviously i know some people are allergic to mohair for example so then you could always just substitute the yarn and in my book i also give some tips on how to substitute yarn because sometimes the yarn that i maybe have used isn't available where you live or you just don't like that quality so then you can always substitute just make sure that you then do a little sample swatch to test gauge and just to see that you get a drape and a feel that you like. The really special thing about the Room to Bloom sweater is of course that there are these embroideries that I have chosen to put them on two places and I'm also giving instructions in the book and some tips on how to create these flowers, embroidered flowers, but you are of course free to interpret this the way you want and keep it really minimalistic or go all out and fill the whole sweater with embroidered flowers so this is really your chance to express your inner artist or I mean even if you don't like the flowers at all you could just knit the sweater and have it just as a really basic sweater because I really love that it's so contemporary the fit you can wear it with jeans you could wear it with a skirt or a dress or with tight jeans or with straight pants it's really really versatile and this is also by the way size medium that I am wearing moving on to the bubblegum sweater this is definitely one of the sweaters that I've worn the most out of all of the projects that I've made for the book 
and I think it's a combination of the fit is just so so comfy it's again a little bit oversized and it's knitted with one strand of merino and actually two strands of silk mohair and again you're free to of course substitute those yarns the name the bubblegum sweater comes from I don't know if you remember but when I was a kid I loved those gumball machines outside of like supermarkets and I would always want to get some of those so that's where the name comes from because these really remind me of those little little gumballs that you would get as a child. Okay, next one, a sweater that you probably haven't seen that much, or I haven't at least uh, shown it that much uh, online, and it's this, this one. It's called the Stripey Affair Sweater. This is really a sweater for anyone out there who can't decide on colors. I, for one, struggle so often with deciding on what colors to use because I just want to buy like all the yarns. <laughs> And if you have maybe some scrap yarns or you don't have really quantity for one sweater, you could make the stripey affair sweater. So this one is again really contemporary fit, quite boxy, it has pretty wide uh, sleeves and it has a v-neck which is really really flattering for most body types. And again quite oversized but this one doesn't have any slit and that's like a wide 2x2 two two rib uh, on the sleeves and on the hem and also up here on the v-neck. And yeah, it's just like a really good project, I think, when you can't decide on colors or maybe you have some yarn that doesn't really, it's not enough for a full sweater, but then you could combine it and make the Stripe the Affair sweater instead. Next up, we have the Stay Up Till Dawn sweater, which is a really good project if you're kind of new to anything because this one is knitted on really big size needles and with pretty chunky yarn so it's really really quick to finish i think i made this one in like a week or a week and a half i mean i did knit a lot on it but still like that goes to show that you can really create something really quickly and it's yeah i think it's like a fairly easy project to try if you're new to knitting. Um, the only thing you have to do is that you knit this uh, circularly from top down. I've used Drops Wish yarn, uh, which is also pretty affordable. Um, so it's like a really chunky, but still quite lightweight and really, I think, very soft. So it's not itchy or coarse yarn. And the whole idea for this Stay Up Till Dawn sweater came from, um, I wanted to make a cropped sweater that was possible to wear with dresses or with skirts, even in the colder months, because I love to wear skirts and dresses. And sometimes longer sweaters can be, can look a little funky. So I wanted to make something really cropped. I also made this version of the Stay Up Till Dawn sweater for the book. This is done with scrap yarn. So I just took whatever yarns I had and made a really stripy version of it. So you can really see how just switching off the color can make a huge difference. Um, even though it's like a very basic, basic design. Next up is the cloud sweater. This one you might have seen before. Um, this is the second sweater I made for the book and it's called the cloud sweater. It's knitted with two strands of silk mohair. I've used uh, the silk mohair by Knitting for Olive in the color cloud as a she in the color cloud and that's why also I named the sweater a uh, cloud and also because it's just so airy and I wanted to make something really again oversized that is really airy and soft wear maybe on days when it's not like super cold outside but you still want to wear something knitted and this one is also pretty long it has really gorgeous balloon sleeves it's knitted from down on in this round uh, up until the armholes and then you knit it back and forth for the front yoke and the back yoke and then you pick up stitches and knit the sleeves and this one is really one that I have worn with lots of different combinations and sometimes I just tuck it in like this if I think it's a little too long especially with like skirts or again with like jeans and yeah it's just really a soft and nice one and I chose a really light color because I feel like that really works so well with so many different combinations. Real quick, I want to say thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this part of the video. You might already be familiar with Skillshare. They are an online learning platform and they have over 
thousands of classes in all kinds of creative topics. One of the classes I've taken on Skillshare was by Emma Gannon. It was called Unlocking Your Potential, Five Exercises to Build Creative Confidence. And this is a class that I come back to again and again. I am not naturally somebody who will journal and it's not really my main thing, writing. So that's why this class was so valuable to me. And it's still a class that I come back to anytime I feel a little bit stuck or I just need a creative boost and some new ideas and essentially get out of my own way. If you'd like to try out or if you're looking for maybe a new skill or just explore your creativity or you're feeling a little stuck, I can highly recommend Skillshare. And you can even try it out now for free for a full month by clicking the link in the description below. But that is only the first thousand people who get this offer. So do make sure that you click the link in the description below to try it out and explore their huge library of online learning classes. All right, back to the video. Next up is a sweater that you might have seen. It's the Dirty Caramel sweater and it's really my take on more of a traditional color work sweater. So here you have a lot of things going on. This is work from top down with multiple strands of color in this sort of traditionally inspired Fair Isle pattern. And what makes this more contemporary, I would say, is that it has quite a generous neckline opening again because that is just very flattering and feminine. And then it has these really long sleeves that you could either have them just be like extra long, that is also I think super elegant, or then you can fold them up like this. And it also has a bit of a balloon sleeve. So you do decrease quite a lot here before the sleeve. And otherwise this one is really nice because it also is quite light. It's uh, again from uh, Merino and Silk Mohair. I've used different ones. Uh, different colors and again you're free to choose whatever you want but I would maybe be a little bit careful to not choose too thick yarn because when you have stranded color work they do bunch up on the inside with because of the floats so just that's maybe something to think about when you're choosing yarns next up I'm gonna show you one of the cardigans in the book so this is called the lazy cat cardigan it is super, super comfy. It's quite chunky and it's done in a half fisherman's rib, which is really fun to knit. And all you really need to know is how to knit and purl. And then to create this ribbing stitch, you basically, um, on every alternating row, um, you basically knit into the stitch below. For this one, I've just used the snap uh, fastening buttons. I don't know what you call it, snaps, like these things that you can click <laughs> together. Um, you could also have buttons, but I just wanted to have something that is pretty invisible. And the sleeves are a little bit chunky, but they're actually not that uh, wide. They're actually pretty narrow because since the body is pretty wide and this is a size medium, I think if I'm not wrong, um, so the body itself is pretty oversized, so then it's nice to have a little bit more narrow, uh, the sleeves, and this is worked from bottom up, so you do everything in just one piece, and then you separate for the front and for the back, and then lastly, you knit the sleeves. While we're on the subject of cardigans, let me show you the other one that you might have seen me wear on this channel. Uh, quite a few times already. So this is called the Honey Cardigan. This is actually the only design um, that is a design that I made long before I actually started to work on the book. And then I had already actually started to make the pattern Then I just procrastinated <laughs> with it. And then when I started to work on the book, I just figured, ah, maybe I will just include it in the book because this is a pattern that has been really highly requested. So then I figured uh, maybe it's just best that I put it in the book so then everybody who's been asking for it can get it when they get the book. So this is called the Honey Cardigan. It's also a very cropped um, fit because I wanted to be able to wear it with high-waisted jeans or with a dress. Uh, I think it's really, really cute. It also it's done in half fisherman's rib, much like the Lazy Cat Cardigan, but this I've used a much fuzzier mohair yarn it's also super super soft and then the whole thing of course with this is that it has these crochet buttons um, and in the book I give a tutorial with photos on how to create these crochet buttons this is really like that final detail that I at least feel like makes it really professional and looks like something that you could have bought in a shop this 
is the Ivy sweater and this is actually the first sweater that I knitted and created for the book so it's crazy to think that exactly a year ago I was just starting to work on this and plan this. I have lately been wearing it so much because again this one is knitted with merino and silk mohair um, and it's just super soft and I really like the balloon sleeves and I like that there's something going on here so I think it's very decorative with this lace motif and it has inbuilt increases into the motif itself so they're really seamless and invisible um, where you made the increases which is one of the great benefits I think with these kind of yokes. This one I've also just used with jeans or with dresses and it's perfect for now when it starts to get cold but it's not yet like super super cold so this is kind of a in-betweener even though I mean it is really warm so even in the winter I've worn it uh, quite a lot. I'd also say that the ivy sweater maybe if you have a little bit of experience and you're kind of looking to take that next jump and maybe try some cables and lace I would definitely recommend this one because it is pretty intuitive and the lace um, there isn't like too much of it so I think you could definitely do it and if you're unsure you can always turn to Google and YouTube and just search whatever is in the pattern but I think that this would be pretty um, maybe easy to follow even if you're sort of newer to knitting. This some of you might recognize it's called the secret crush sweater and this was the sweater that I created in my 24 hour knitting challenge um, <laughs> that you can go and watch that video if you want to see the whole process of what went into designing and knitting this. Um, it's really been one of my favorites for colder days when I want to also I worn it a lot uh, at home just when I want to be make sure that I'm really cozy and not cold. Um, it has brioche here on the body it has like a really contemporary nice slit also brioche of the sleeves and then it has this super decorative lace it's knitted from top down and I've had two different yarns for this so it became pretty chunky and you would of course also substitute the yarns with something less chunky so something that is a little lighter if you don't want it to be so thick definitely one of the coziest sweaters ever is this maybe forever sweater which is knitted from top down in drops air yarn and it's completely in brioche stitch and it's just so so nice to wear it's uh, super airy and it's also really lightweight even though um, this textures is kind of very rich and voluptuous um, brioche stitch knitting if you haven't tried it I can definitely recommend it it's super super addictive um, and this one I've just chosen to work in a really kind of light pearl gray color because I think that really makes the brioche stand out and I've worn this a lot so so much and it's just really a good like basic sweater that you can pretty much wear with anything the idea for the name for the sweater which is called maybe forever sweater the idea behind that is really that this is such a classic piece that maybe just maybe it will be in your closet forever Those were all the sweaters and cardigans, except one. I also made one for Yuki, uh, so it's technically for male adult, um, even though of course you could also totally make it for a woman or for yourself or for any gender, um, as with any of the other pieces really, I think. Moving on to accessories, which there is a bunch in the book. And the first one that I'll show you is called the Lighthouse Beanie. This one you might have seen on my feed, um, and in the video previous this um, even though it's like a bright orange color which is a color that I never wear until now this has become one of my favorites last winter I wore this so much and I still this is the one that I always want to gravitate towards <laughs> and grab it or wear it um, somehow this pop of color is just like really really I don't know it tears me up and um, the whole point with this one is it's made like in a long tube so you knit it like this so then you really have and then you wear it or fold it in so it becomes double and that just creates like the warmest most luxurious <laughs> cover for your poor ears and your noggin when it's really stormy and cold outside uh, which is something that you definitely need when you live in Scandinavia. 
Next up is the Quiet Delight beanie, which is completely knitted in brioche stitch. And I've also made one version in a kind of dusty pink, and this is more kind of like an olive, I think it's called Dusty Honey, the color. It's knitted with um, knitting for olive yarns. And this one, you can choose to either have it like folded now, like triple, like I have it, or you can also fold it, oh, <laughs> just double. Now it might look a little funny, but you decide basically. Um, and this one is also just super, super comfortable. It's really fluffy and airy. And if you're one of those people who don't like too tight of a beanie, you know, because it can sort of um, flatten your hair a little bit, then I would definitely recommend you choose this one. This one is called the Polar Paws Beanie, and it is uh, knitted with Sunnes Borsted Alpaca. And you can see there are some cables and stuff happening, but even though you have these cables, this one you can totally knit up in one evening, like three to four hours and you're done. You have a new beanie uh, because it's knitted holding two strands of uh, this Sandes Borstest Alpaca yarn. So it's just really quick to knit, but then you have the cables and the lace, which still makes it like an engaging project. Since releasing the book, I also actually made one in this pistachio color, which I haven't worn yet, but next winter I really look forward to wearing it in this color as well. And the last one of the hats or the beanies is this one, which is called Hello There Mohair, <laughs> because the name says it all. This one is knitted with three strands of silk mohair. And the trick is really that you can choose three shades of a color that are quite similar to each other, because that really creates this really nice and vibrant texture and depth to your color. And this one I wanted to make because I at least I have so much scrap yarns. So this is the perfect project where you can just bat, no, bust, no, yes, bust your stash <laughs> and get rid of some of those uh, random maybe mohairs that have been left over from other projects and you can create and knit a little beanie for yourself. Moving on to mittens. So there are two pairs of mittens in the book. First ones are called the Sprinkly Five Mittens, and they are just a delight to knit. Also really good if you're looking for a project to use some scrap yarn on, because you don't really need that much yarn. And they are knitted with stranded color work, because that really creates a dense fabric, so your paws <laughs> are not gonna get cold. Um, I've used this Camaro's um, Lama Uld, I think it's called, and has like really gorgeous color palette and these are also like a project that you can definitely finish like one or two nights maybe two or three nights actually um and really soft and nice to wear and they're also like made sure that they're long enough so they really also cover some of that wrist so you know when you have a jacket on that you don't get cold <laughs> The second pair of mittens are called the lollipop mittens and as you can see the colors are reversed on the right and the left mitten. I for one, well, I always struggle a little bit with socks and with mitten knittings because once you've made one you always have to do the second one so that's why I decided to switch it up so you change color so that way it will be still fun to knit the other one as well because you'll have a different color combination so it will look really different uh, and here you fold up um, around the wrist again to keep it really extra warm and then you have just like a simple design but you have this little <laughs> pop of color and like really fun details of the thumb. There is also one scarf in the book which is called Brioche Station and it's knitted in two color brioche which means that you choose two different colors and then on one side you have this effect and on the other side, you have this effect. So in a way you get two scarves for the price of one. And it's really fun to just think of color combination. Obviously you could also make this, I suppose, as uh, just one color, so just in brioche, and then you knit it as far as you want yourself. But I've worn this a lot, it's really nice. I mean, scarves, they do stretch out quite a bit, so that's maybe good to take into consideration. And I've used uh, as my yarns, from Sunnes, Kos, and then brushed alpaca. And that also gives it a pretty nice and vibrant and interesting texture. There are two pairs of socks in the books. The first one are called the Smart Heart Socks. And these were really inspired actually by my grandfather because he would wear woolen socks in his sneakers. 
uh, all throughout summer and then in winter he would just change the sneakers to winter boots and the good benefit with woolen socks is that in the summer they are really breathable so they keep you kind of fresh and in the winter they keep your feet warm and then I call them the smart heart socks because I made this little embroidered heart here uh, as a little bit of a detail and then you fold it also down and I really wanted to have a sock that is pretty light that you can wear in sneakers and these are just super super comfortable and I've worn them quite a bit already uh, but I'm definitely gonna make uh, a second pair because they are really my favorite socks uh, ever. And then uh, last but not least we have the dip the tip socks which get their name from the little tip of dip of color that you have both here at the end and then at the beginning and also at the this is called heel uh, and these are more chunky they're also more stretchy and you uh, all the time work with two strands of yarns to get these marled color and these ones I've worn quite a bit at home actually um, really just nice to knit pretty simple um, and easy socks to make but really really comfortable Oof, all right, those were all of the knits that I've knitted for my book Knit This and I've put the link in the description below So if you want to order a physical copy of the book or if you want to order the ebook You can do so by clicking the link in the description below. I would be so happy and it's so Amazing and surreal to see people already getting the book in their hands and using the patterns to create their own knits it's just the most wonderful feeling and it's crazy to think that it's taken me a year to knit everything and there was so much work and just so many things that I learned and I'm planning to do a whole separate video talking about like the whole book process and designing knits and making patterns and all of that because that's a topic that is pretty huge but I hope you found it fun to just see all the patterns and all the designs for this knitting book uh, if you have a question then you can let me know in the comment below and I will try to reply um, and if you want to see more photos of them, you can come and come over to <laughs> my Instagram page, Kuzu Makika, um, because there I've also posted more photos of them and also just more information about the book. And if you want to just keep up to date what's happening. And now I'm just really, really uh, looking forward to, especially also after making my whole wedding dress project, um, focusing on small, smaller knits and slowly doing some sweater knits again, because it is fall and it's really, really a nice time of year. Thank you so much for hanging up with me. I hope you found this video fun and enjoyable and gave you some inspiration or some knitting inspiration or ideas and I will see you next time. Bye!